Hey, Ben here with Studio on the Lake. So, uh, back down in Iowa, and uh, here's one of three or four that I'm, I'm editing through. This is a, a phoenix feather. It's just kind of a, a quick tutorial on what I thought maybe a, a phoenix feather would look like for some of you who are uh, interested in, in feathers out there. I do have the, uh, it was painted with acrylics and then a coat of uh, clear gloss. And it's pretty straightforward and simple, and it's kind of a fun project to do. I, I do, I'm still in editing on the uh, black cat, cap chickadee, and then I've got a, a little gnome that's in the middle for a second video coming in, and then uh, you you uh, will get to see in the middle of this, I'll show you what I'm doing with uh, uh, a ruddy duck. And so, as always, starts off with a piece of uh, basswood, and... Uh, this is all freehand and imagination because nobody knows what a uh, phoenix feather truly looks like. I kind of wanted a uh, rip off of a peacock eye there on the end. And I, I started with a pretty thick piece of wood. It, it looks thick on the left hand side there, but uh, my wood is not dimensional. It's, it's processed here and someday I'll show you that. Um, and the right side is, is a little thinner, probably quarter inch. And I didn't bother to uh, go through the, the saw on that. So there it is, cut out of the bandsaw. And it's got a little bit of a curve to it. And uh, ready to go. You can see my breath there. When I, when I filmed this, it was uh, that week or two of minus 15, minus 20 weather. And the, the stove hadn't quite caught up. That's why you see me wearing a... A flannel shirt and also uh, a jacket there and then you see uh, my breath in the background so I'm laying out where I want it to go and then the first thing I'm going to set up here is burn down uh, on along the sides and I'm not going real deep uh, I'm just trying to get that uh, nib on the center of the feather in there and, and this I did speed up it's a uh, 200 or twice as twice the speed which is what I typically run when I'm doing this and a lot of this will be twice the speed and, and this one here I will not be burning each individual uh, feather uh, portion in there uh, I'll do uh, most of it with a stone as you'll see and that's just to show you a different technique and then the way that uh, this reads and when you get to the black cat chickadee uh, there will be quite a bit of burning in there, but there will be quite a bit of stoning also. So here's a cut saw. Uh, this is a medium, and I'm just kind of using that uh, uh, that burn mark as a, as a stop cut, something to guide. The tip of that flame has a tendency to sit down in there, and it's real nice, light little strokes. This one is my uh, 40,000 uh, RPM handpiece, my newer one from PJL Enterprises. I talked about in the last video, and, and I do have a video I need to re-edit. Uh, I, I did a whole review and uh, comparison on PJL Ultima burner combo. Uh, it has a, a burner on one side, and then it has the handpiece on the other side. Uh, and fortunately, this is a couple weeks ago, I talked to Pat over in uh, Minnesota at PJL Enterprises, and he quit. He's not doing the uh, micro motors anymore. And uh, I'll, I'll spare you the two-hour conversation that I had with him. But uh, when, I, when I get a chance down here this week in Iowa, uh, I, I intend to go back through that and recommend uh, a couple of different power carvers that, that will take the place of these ones that I use. And I'll also share some secrets with you if you're handy that you can take uh, the Korean, not the Chinese, hand pieces and uh, make a couple of changes to them that are three four dollar changes that will make the life of those things uh, go for 20 years and I, I haven't tried that but I, i'll put together a, a video i think i might play around with that marathon three one that i reviewed here a while back and and see if you can't make the internal pieces of this uh, the cost of these things is around three three fifty four hundred bucks for the cheaper ones uh, you can. I would recommend you stay away from the uh, well, anything under 150, because I, I think you get what you pay for in a lot of cases, especially with the. I guess Korea makes some, and China makes some, and they, you want to stay away from the ones that come from China. 
uh, looking at them, it looks like maybe the ones that are they're called strong, S-T-R-O-N-G, uh, seem to be a little better. But then you get into the brushless and the better ones, you're going to pay instead of $350, you're going, you automatically jump to the $750, $850 range. And, and quite honestly, I, I think that's probably where you have to go uh, nowadays if you're going to get one that lasts for quite a while. But I'll, I'll talk about that in another video. So I ran down each side. Now I'm kind of, I've got some pencil marks on there and I'm just thinning things out where I want them to go. I'm not going to try to make it too thin because then it becomes fragile and brittle. The grain is running up and down through that and you can kind of see what I've got going on the end of this thing there. Kind of a, a big flame going through the top. And when I did some research on, on the flames to get the colors and that sort of thing right, I, I kind of went with a hot rod. Uh, as a better example to get the color degradation or, or uh, when it goes from the orange to the red to the blue uh, all the different color and the yellows are the colors of, of a flame so on this I, I'm just thinning this down and I'm I'm taking all the bumps out and I'm contouring from the center of the nib down towards the edge and I'll do a lot more work as we go along to get the shape on that and I do have uh, like I said two or three videos that uh, still are in editing and, and need the rest of the, the stuff so don't don't give up on me uh, if you haven't subscribed by all means subscribe uh, I like to I enjoy reading the comments their comments are all positive and I thank you for that um, Although I think I could ignore the other comments. I, I was watching. Uh, I thought I'd found a new carver. And he's up in Alaska uh, doing some YouTube stuff. Uh, kind of like Rob and I about the same position in our, our careers here. And I'm not going to name him. You can go through and figure that out yourself. Uh, but I, I, I really liked a couple of the things he was doing. And then all of a sudden I ran across a video uh, where he was griping and complaining and uh, bitching and moaning and uh, that's too bad you guys don't watch this to hear me gripe and complain uh, you don't necessarily care what my opinion is I think I think personally you're watching this because you enjoy uh, seeing the carving uh, you don't want to hear me talk about how tough my life is everybody has a tough life and it just kind of turned me off so I, I had subscribed I just unsubscribed because I, I don't need to hear someone whine and we've got a pretty well-known character carver here uh, well he's in Canada and, and he does the same thing and I've unsubscribed from his stuff because he has a tendency to whine about uh, about you guys the ones that are watching this and uh, I, I, I don't get it enough get off the soapbox here so this next uh, this is the older hand piece this is 23 24 year old hand piece that's no longer being made of course and this one was rated at 30,000 but I did get uh, 20 years out of this before I sent it back and it had new bearings and brushes put in it I think the newer ones uh, the ones I was talking about in the 750 range you, you get into uh, the rage now just like DeWalt tools and various different things is to get a brushless motor and if you know anything about motors, then you don't have to change that little carbon uh, uh, piece pieces in the back. And uh, it's just one less thing to wear out. So the difference between uh, uh, setting a points in an old car or an old tractor versus electronic ignition, when you replace that, you never have to set the points ever again. Uh, some things uh, in the modern world move forward and they're good so what I'm doing to this thing is I'm just contouring from the nib in the center I, I'm not going to do the back so this isn't going to be two-sided uh, a way to display this might be up on an upright stand uh, all by itself I'm not going to do that a lot of people will take these feathers if you see some carvers doing feathers they will put them in a, a glass case which is not necessarily a bad idea and then they'll put a, a little brass plaque or a name tag in there telling you that this is from a, uh, a crow or a, a raven or an eagle or a hawk of some sort and uh, this one I did in about two hours and uh, you can see the sun was peeking through but that didn't do a whole lot for the the cold 
So here's the tip part on it I'm redrawing back. And this part right here, I kind of had a uh, put a little flame eye in the center that I just drew. And now I'm drawing out where I want the flow lines and the splits. Uh, the feather splits, for those of you that have done a few feathers or if you're planning on doing a feather, the feather splits are what make these feathers look realistic. If you pick up any given feather, walk across your yard and find a feather, it, it, chances are it won't be perfect unless you run your hand from the base of the nib all the way to the tip and then a lot of these uh, feather barbs tend to align. Um, but in general, there'll be one side, three or four splits down the feather where they one curls over the under or under the other one, and that's really what makes the feather come alive. If you're if you're carving a feather, that in addition to the color and that sort of thing, once you get all these uh, how to do these fine lines down. So there, it's all laid out. I, I need to do. I, I should have got up. And a couple of videos are like this, that sun peeking through one of the windows over in the studio. All right, so here, here's a project. You're going to see the first part of this uh, later this week. This is an older ruddy duck. These are two that I've kept. Their bills actually are blue and pink. Uh, that's not a uh, free-for-all thing there. And I like carving these. I've carved a lot of these. They're, they're cocky little fellows. They're kind of the Bantam rooster of the duck world. You can see that I did that in July of 01. And you can see that rotted wood on the bottom. I did that while I was uh, in, in the military in Kosovo. So I was on the night shift, the QRF with a, a air assault group. And uh, people would tell me, the different teams would tell me where they found some wood uh, out when they're doing their patrols. And, and in the middle of the night, we'd fly over there waste your government dollars. And I'd take a chainsaw and I'd, I'd get some wood. Well, some of it turned out to be not that great. Uh, I did not have the use of a bandsaw. This is the second one. The tail is going to be separate. The head will be separate. Uh, and I, I've got the one I'm working on. I, I've got a plan to put a lot of attitude in him. Not that these guys don't. And Well, you can't read that upside down. There we go. That was done in Kosovo in uh, uh, 2000. So he's, what, 21 years old now. You can see the, the feathers on the back are a little little weak, and, and they've taken some abuse. I should probably fix those. But that, that's a project that's uh, in the works. I haven't finished the carving, but I do have enough, uh, I think, to do part one of the video and show you how I go. So this is going to, like I said, have some minimal burning. And this is, this is a real time. Uh, and this is doing two things for me. One, it's putting those fine uh, barbs up against the big barb. And now we went to two times <coughs> to save you some pain. And I'll burn all the way down the side of this, but I, I won't burn each individual one. There you see how far I went with that burning. This is the fun part. This is this is where this starts to come alive. And a lot of times I will burn uh, one of these feathers all the way through in a three or four hour process just because it's relaxing to me to do the burning. People, uh, when they look at this, they go, my God, how do you have the patience uh, to do all of that. Well, uh, this is fun for me. You can see I'm pretty comfortable. Jordy's noticed I've got my pillow. Hey, Jordy and, and Rob, Mark the Maker, all you knuckleheads. Calvin, you should do a couple of these feathers um, just for the fun of it. And and this is, is, is where the feathers are going to run. And it's kind of the flow of the whole thing. So uh, there you have it, uh, there's the layout, and then the, the next thing I want to do in here is do the rest of these uh, with a stone, and, and those burn marks are really kind of in there for uh, a guidance. So remember what I was talking about splits and, and where the different uh, degradations would go in there. This one's kind of overkill, but this is going to be the flow, and you can see that I'm, I'm using that... Uh, Burr, and now I'm going to come back and draw in where I want the actual small feather barbs to go. And this top part's a little tricky because we want it to sweep 
left and right and fan out. All right, so here's the magic in the splits. This is a, a German jeweler saw. has a fine, fine blade in there. You can do it on a scroll saw. It's just easier than getting up and going over. Or you can do it on the band saw if you wanted to. This is just quick. I keep this hanging on a, a rack on a shelf behind me. And when I, you know, you've seen me before if you've followed any of this. And a couple of these, I'm going to put a little... Um, circle kind of like there at the end you see the end of that feather has a, a circle in it I'm gonna put a couple of those in with this because it's realistic where the flame on this Phoenix feather would be uh, coming out and you can see those splits starting to come out now so after you get these splits cut in there then you want to kind of come back and carve away the lower portion because it'll either slip under another one or be a complete they won't be on the same level You can see why I like that little uh, jeweler saw. It, it does a really nice job. That uh, that saw, you can find those, and it is called a jeweler saw. You can get away with a coping saw. I just think this is fancy, and it appeals to the, uh, the metal working and the engineer side of me, the way that this thing's put together. Uh, I've been intended to make one because they're they're pretty straightforward and have what the basic machinists uh, tricks in, in in there I might have got a little carried away uh, with the splits on this but then again it it's a made-up feather and uh, no one knows what it's supposed to look like and here I'm cutting that round portion out which which uh, makes sense to me that, that there would be a little curl in the flame going back inside of some of these pieces all right so this is a little ceramic stone and uh, that's there will be a little bit of burning in here where I connect stuff together but you can see how I'm working on each of those individual splits and I've left my pencil lines in there, you, they're hard to see. But I'm gonna do the, the contouring of this all with this stone. And if you take a, if you remember that, and you take a good look at the end, uh, when this thing's painted, you'll see that, that these read through as well as the, uh, the burn would read through. So you could do this all with a fine burner. And you can kind of see in my sunlight, blinking on it there that uh, this is doing a real nice job and it is a lot quicker than burning now, I'm running this at two times the speed uh, and now I, before I, I do the the left side there I, I'm coming back with the ruby bit and just making sure that it, it's it's where I want it on the levels and then I clean up the edges a little bit leaving them a little thicker because I, I don't want this to uh, uh, just break into pieces like it will so, as always, you want to sign your pieces um, just for the hell of it, I guess. I've talked about maybe someday if you get famous, if you sign them, they're certainly worth a lot more money uh, to someone. If you don't get famous, uh, they'll notice that, hey, there's 200 of these things sitting in a shed somewhere, and they'll all go in the rollaway dumpster uh, because nobody sees any use for them. There's a knick-knack paddywhack, right? So you can see I'm kind of cleaning up, but I'm not going to burn a whole lot. I just kind of want a line uh, flowing into some of these different areas. Uh, these are a lot of fun. Uh, they're totally worthless. They have no use whatsoever other than a wow factor. They're, they're kind of like a ball and chain. Uh, someone looks at it and goes, oh, wow, you can do that with wood carving. So many of the things we do uh, with wood carving are completely worthless but uh, those of us like Jordy Johnson over at Carbon Fusion, Just Carve Rob, Mark the Maker, uh, Calvin, uh, they all know that uh, and, and Gene Messer who's been doing this for years and years and is uh, the godfather. Check out Gene if you haven't. 
but we do this for the fun of it. So this was painted. This was kind of my idea of uh, what a phoenix feather would look like. You can see how those uh, those lines are, that I did with the stone are are really showing up, and they read real well through the feathers. It does the same thing on a decoy. So. Uh, that's pretty much the end of it. You can see I filmed this on another day uh, where it was still cold. You can see my breath in the background. And uh, I owe you a couple of videos. You got a black cat, cap chickadee coming. Uh, we got uh, uh, the ruddy ducks and whatnot. So like uh, helps out. Comment, subscribe, and uh, thanks for watching. This has been Ben with Studio on the Lake.